Welcome to the Noob's Guide for Benchmarking Gaming PC Temps. My name is Corey with NoobComputerBuild.com. You might be here today because you're looking to test out the temperatures on your gaming PC, and uh, or you might be here thinking, why would I want to be benchmarking the temperatures on my gaming PC? Say you just built your first PC. Uh, you might be wanting to uh, maximize the efficiency of your PC as much as possible. So you just want to get everything optimized to the exact amount in order to have your temperatures at the very lowest. Or perhaps you've had a gaming PC for quite a while and you have an, uh, uh, an air cooler on your CPU and you're wondering, oh, should I get a liquid CPU? Um, this might be one way of testing that out. Or you have something in your case, uh, all of a sudden it's uh, getting really hot and you want to kind of narrow down what exactly is getting hot. Uh, we'll figure out how to do that today. So what we're going to do is kind of figure out how do you benchmark your gaming PC? How do you measure the temperatures of the various components within it? So we'll go through the software on that. And then we'll do a little bit of a test on this PC right here. So the test being, um, do the case fans on this, on, this, uh, on this PC here matter? And which ones matter the most? And so I have three intake fans on it and two exhaust fans on it, uh, uh, case fans, 120 millimeter case fans. And so we're gonna do a test where the intake fans are off and only the exhaust fans are on uh, and just see how that performs. Uh, one test where the exhaust fans are off and the intake fans are on. And then one test where all the fans are on and kind of average it between a bunch of benchmarking suites and just see how we can get the lowest possible temperature and which one matters the most. So let's get started with how to check your gaming PC's temperatures and what software to use. So there are various software that you can use to capture your gaming PC's temps and the various hardware that you have. So just for your reference today, uh, what I'm using here is a Ryzen 7 3700X CPU with its stock race stealth cooler with a 5700 RX 5700 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard with a Cooler Master 175R case. So that's kind of the important hardware for today. But in terms of how do you check, how, so how do you check the temperatures on your PC? So there's various ways. You can use uh, your motherboard's built-in software, such as this one that you see here. I have a MSI Dragon Center uh, with my Tomahawk Max. Okay, here, MSI Afterburner. So we can use that, and then we can benchmark using this as well. Um, and, or sorry, the settings here. Uh, we can go into monitoring and play around with that. So that's another way. That's also a great way of seeing temperatures in game. Or uh, So if you're gaming and you want to see it on the left hand side there or wherever on your screen while you're gaming. But for the sake of today, uh, my, the one I'm, I'm going to suggest here is HW Info. So if we go here, I'm going to go to HW Info. Oh, it's up here. Uh, this one uh, I linked to the Guru 3D. Just Google it, HW Info, and download that uh, right here. So I'm going to open it up. And here's HW Info. So when you load up HW Info for the first time, you'll see kind of an overview of your, C, uh, of your PC. And then what you want to do is go to the top. I'm going to open this wider. We're going to go to sensors. And here in sensors, you'll see all of the sensors that your motherboard has available. So there's various ones that are different, but uh, the ones that we're going to look at today, the CPU, the GPU, and the system temperature. Uh, today, we're just going to use the CPU die average. Uh, right now you can see it's at 53.2 degrees celsius um, the system temperature on the my msi b450 tomahawk max is 39.8 so this takes it from a sensor on the motherboard at a certain position and takes an average of what it's inside the case and then uh, the gpu if we go down to the bottom here you can see the gpu temperature is at 47.8 on average uh, with the current being at 48 degrees celsius and then there's other various temperatures in between. So if you want to really get technical and, and kind of narrow it down to different spots on your GPU, that's possible too. As well as you can see the RPMs of your fans. Uh, and then if we go up here, you can see the different fans on, on the various, oops, no, don't change that, uh, that I have in the case, as well as the CPU fan and what RPM those are running at. So this is kind of how I would just kind of to get an overview of what your PCs operating at in terms of temperatures, including drive temperatures, etc. This is the way to do it. So how exactly do I benchmark the temperatures? So you can have, you can see the temperatures in HW Info, but you can also, if you go to the bottom right here, you can see logging start. So I've set up uh, in the settings so that it saves onto my desktop, but as soon as I click logging start, I have it set to uh, an F key as well. It'll start benchmarking the temperatures. So I'll start a software suite, start benchmarking them, and then I'll click done on the once it's done and then it saves it into a spreadsheet on my desktop so I have all of the data captured and then I can bring those into charts and graphs and things like that. 
So then which temperatures are the most ideal, which which matter? And so I kind of pointed out the ones that I'm, um, I'm going to be using today, but they're all important. So what are good temps for your CPU? That, that might be a good question. I would So what I where I would start is look up uh, the, perf the specifications of your CPU. So I mentioned that we're using a Ryzen 7 3700X today, which has a max temp of 95 degrees Celsius. So we wouldn't want to kind of get close to that. Well, we can get close to that, but we wouldn't want to go over that as that would be over what you'd want it. So I'd say you want it to be around 50 to 60 on idle, 80 to 90 under under load, right? So that's a kind of good general idea of where you want to keep those temperatures at. And then the, the CPU, the different temperatures on here, you have the CPU TC, uh, TDI temperature, which is specific to Ryzen CPUs. That would report on the, all the sensors at the highest temperature of all of those, uh, out of all of those. And so that's why you can see that it's higher. The CPU die is the average reporting on the overall average of all the sensors. And then you have the TDI, which is reporting on a single sensor on some edge of the uh, core die on the CPU. So today we're going to be using CPU die average for our benchmarks. So graphics card, what's a good temperature for the graphics card? Today I'm using a graphics card that typically performs a little higher than others. Uh, for one, it's it, it's the uh, blower version of the 5700, uh, which uh, inherently uh, operates higher. but anywhere between 100 to 105 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees being kind of the rough average limit for most GPUs. Uh, so you want it kind of below that, a good one below 85 degrees Celsius, roughly. If you want to get other into other hardware on your computer, so you can go uh, memory, you can test the memory on there as well, as I'd mentioned earlier, which H with HW info, you should keep your RAM below 45 degrees Celsius to in order to have max DDR4 uh, kind of performance. There's a guy that did a video. I just want to pull it up here on why you should keep your RAM below 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, this fellow, this here, little fan. Um, and so what he basically finds out is that he puts a little fan above his RAM and he was able to save 70, 17 degrees Celsius. Uh, and yeah, after he tried it with higher overclocks, um, his frame rates, uh, it affected his frame rates quite a bit. So uh, good SSD temperatures between the typical SSDs operate between zero to 70 degrees Celsius. So again, those system temperatures, keep those down as much as possible. And then let's go down. What software can you use to benchmark your gaming PC? And what this means is how do you stress your PC out enough so that it increases the overall temperatures so that you can get a viable test out of it? And so where I would say is that you kind of want to do an all for the sake of my test today I'm going to choose a few and I'll get to that in a second But here's a list right here of some good benchmark software. There's more of course It's not fully comprehensive, but these are kind of good go-to's so we have heaven as an example of uh, Unengine's uh, benchmarks, which is a great kind of GPU type one uh, benchmark uh, Primarily used to test GPUs. So in my case if I did it, I would be stressing my GPU and I'd expect that to be uh, hotter than most of the software, but overall it should increase the system temperatures as well. So we also have Cinebench R20. Uh, you can kind of download that here as well. Uh, just to mention, if you go to noobcomputerbuild.com and find uh, this article on the guide to benchmarking gaming PC temps, they're all linked here too. So, um, Superposition by Unengine as well is a great one, great GPU test. A memory test could be Memtest 86 Plus, Prime 95 for CPU and memory test, W Prime as a CPU test, Geekbench tests both CPU and GPU, A to 64 is a great RAM test, Crystal Disk uh, is uh, kind of a really good go-to for storage tests uh, if you wanted to get down to the storage tests, and then just PC games. Examples, Tomb Raider, Hitman, etc. Uh, they also have uh, built-in uh, benchmarking software as well. Uh, those are great games that you can kind of push your PC to the max as well. So um, a good way to kind of do that is kind of use these and, and, and change your variables one by one and, and do the test over and over. So if you want to test uh, your GPU temperatures and your overclocking, for example, and you want to go, oh, how much do my temperatures actually increase when I do that? Do like 3D Mark Basic Edition a few times get an average and then um, overclock and then do it again and just see oh how how much does it actually affect the temperatures so like i said today the test that we're going to do is testing the 120 millimeter fans on my gaming pc that i have right beside me and how i'm going to do that is by testing the average system temperatures and the temperatures on the cpu and gpu and then comparing them to having either the intake fans on exhaust fans off and exhaust fans on and exhaust fans off uh, and then having them all on and just seeing which of those three scenarios per, uh, are temperatures performing the best and so all fans they're 120 millimeter fans i set them all to 50 percent speed so uh when i not when i'm not doing tests i actually have them optimized to 
uh, I have the smart fan curve set up so that when temperatures increase it increases the fan and RPMs etc but we're gonna for the sake of this test just have them all at the same speed here are the results of the test and so you can see all three tests all fans on only exhaust fans on and only intake fans on and there are there's a clear loser and kind of a, a clear kind of sort of winner uh, t kind of a, almost a tie between the winners I, I suppose uh, given the variables here but uh, the lower the temperature the better obviously and what we used here is uh, the baseline kind of idle temperature for five minutes superposition 4k optimized 3d mark time spy prime 95 cpu torture test and then given the average so if you look on the right here this is where you want to kind of be looking 42.2 degrees celsius on average uh, with only the in intake fans on so that's no exhaust fans on so you can see with only the intake fans it gets significantly hot so obviously you need uh, where I would need in this case uh, at least one exhaust I would say I didn't do the test for that but I have two going right now and that seems to be working quite well and so with only the exhaust fans on and no intake fans on technically that's the winner in this case for the overall system temperatures 33.3 uh, degrees Celsius and then 34.4 degrees Celsius only a bit more uh, they kind of a tie this is kind of I would say they're pretty much the same with all the fans on so obviously my intake fans are making very little difference uh, given given these results moving on for the CPU temperatures so this is measuring the CPU temperature uh, average CPU temperature and moving over to the right again we have the average CPU temperature with only the intake fans on at 60.2 degrees celsius that's that's pretty you know that's not really hot for the cpu but uh compared to the other uh variables here it's it's hotter it's significantly hotter so again having in only no exhaust fans is not a good thing and then the other two are very very close in comparison actually being the slight winner in this case so the intake fans got a little bit of a win here and then uh having only the exhaust fans on a little little bit hotter just a teeny bit overall gpu temperatures we can see that there's a based on um, the numbers again the clear winner is that a clear loser is having only an intake fans on lost again with the temperatures of even the gpu so in in this case having exhaust fans cools down not only the overall system temperatures but the cpu temperatures and the gpu temperatures significantly and so we can see here with the only exhaust fans on it's at 57.2 degrees celsius so the winner here and then all fans on at 57.8 so a really almost a close tie there the numbers are a little closer all overall but that makes sense given that the gpu is a blower fan model and that it i would know i would have actually expected them all these tests to kind of be very kind of the similar but this you can really see, see that uh, um, exhaust fans are needed 100 percent in this case so I hope this has helped you get a clear understanding as to how you can benchmark your gaming PC temps if you wanted to do so um, in order to optimize your PC or just if you're just interested in learning how to look up PC temps, how to benchmark your gaming PC temps, how to kind of glean insight out of uh, your PC's temps as well. Uh, or if you wanted to set up a test of your own on your own PC, uh, you know, managing or changing kind of your fan configurations and things like that uh, in order and using temperature as your kind of uh, measurement benchmark. How hot does your gaming PC get? Leave a comment.